following up on that too, there's two women's matches out of the whole card tonight. Is there a dedicated plan that you're trying to stick to or would hope to stick to of how much percentage of each show on the weekly show is dedicated to women's matches and men's matches? Yeah, there is. And, uh, you know, I mean, percentage, I think like, uh, I will say that like the shows, we, some of the shows we've done, some of the content, some of it's been very different than what you'll see on TV, but a lot of it's been very representative. Um, I would like to, you know, do at least a, a few women's matches on every show when, it, when possible. Uh, there are a lot of wrestlers on the roster right now, both on men's and women's, that I want to try and use more. So uh, it, is, it is another effort. And, you know, I am open to more content other than just the two-hour show and these pay-per-views. But the big thing right now is to focus on quality shows like, you know, Double or Nothing All Out. And now Full Gear, I'm really excited about. I think you guys know about Full Gear now, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I really hope you come. I promise it's going to be a really good show. I, we've done really good for our, our pay-per-views. I think the standard of Double or Nothing and All I think, you know, Fight for the Fallen and Fighter were really, really good shows. I really enjoyed them. But I thought Double or Nothing and All Out, we, we tried to kick it up to a standard and give people their money's worth. And I really hope all you guys can make it to Baltimore November 9th. It, uh, it'll be a, I promise it'll be a really, really good pay-per-view. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do for weekly TV. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, there are several, like I was saying before, there are a lot of the women's wrestlers that we need to feature more, and it's something I really do want to emphasize. I, I personally spent a lot of time in the women's battle royale because I wanted to establish a lot of characters, and I also wanted to establish that certain people in the division are really, really, really important wrestlers, and that's why we wanted to, like, give that a good presentation. I thought the women's battle royale was excellent, like I said. I thought the Joshi match was also excellent, and I'm, I'd look forward to seeing a lot of those people again. So no hard number percentage of like 50 percent men's 50 no no sure not one show we've done has been like we have to get this many men's it has to be it's pretty merit-based and i really believe in the people we put on every show and it's look like i'm not saying the people who haven't been on the shows don't deserve but i'm saying like everybody who's been on a show i really believe they deserve the spot except for maybe the nakazawa jabali match uh <laughs> yeah. do you have um short and long-term viewership goals for aew on tnt that you're able to share yeah, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't really uh, share. And also, I really uh, need to spend a lot of time now that we've gotten through All Out because there's been a big push to get through this. You'll be hearing a lot more about that show, the name of that show, the uh, more details about not just week one, but some of the other weeks too. Because we're going to, I mean, every week's going to be a big show. They've asked me, the network literally asked me, the guy, one of the, uh, one of the top executives, and I have to get back to him on this. This is his issue. He was like, uh, w you know, what are the important big weeks that I should be there? And I was like, they're they're all important. I'll give you some, you know, so I'll tell you, I'm tell, you tell you a lot of important things are going to happen, just like I'm telling the fans when we've made these announcements and sent them a calendar we are, but they're all big and they're all these shows are going to be huge. So, uh, no, I mean, uh, with AEW and TNT, you know, I, I think it's going to be awesome, but to be honest, a lot, we need to do a lot more work getting ready for that show now that we've put this one behind us as, as a company. And I think uh, everybody's looking forward to like resting up tonight, regrouping next week. I'm looking forward. Uh, Fulham's on international break. The Jags open the season next week. Uh, I've already done a lot of work for uh, things I'm going to be uh, doing there uh, to get ahead because AEW, the schedule wasn't as heavy uh, as it might be in the future. And I've been able to do a really uh, a ton of work at the Jags and Fulham to take advantage of the fact that we weren't running weekly and, and to plan ahead. And uh, I'm going to stay ahead in, in there. And I do think with you know, AEW and TNT, what I would say uh, about it is like viewership goals, uh, I expect you know, if, if we're in a competitive situation, I expect to be very, very competitive. I'm a very competitive person. I play, you know, in sports and everything we do. And I think yeah, this, there's an entertainment aspect, but like I've always said, I want people to take this seriously like a sport. And we are a team, you know, we're not, we're not united. We are divided. Everyone here is fighting, but one thing we're united on is doing a show that like sends our fans home happy. And I think we all, we've consistently been doing that. And that numbers. Yeah, I can't really give you a number. I can't give you a number. And that's why I was saying like, I will have numbers. I just haven't been able to get them yet. I'm sorry, I can't be specific. Okay. Totally Do you see yourself getting inside the ring? No, hell, hell no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, because Asia's still here, he's not. Okay, hell no. <laughs> you should have heard what he said to Jimmy Havoc the other day. AJ, I mean. Oh, really? Jimmy. Oh, man. So Jimmy's heard it all. Tony, what is it like um, using animals for entertainment purposes on the show? Because Power obviously didn't want to be on stage tonight, especially when the pyro went off, and that looked really embarrassing for the live crowd, in my opinion. I'm not. And I'm later, not, on, I don't later on, having a horse as well, it was like the Saturday night's main event in 1990 when Jesse and Vince were sitting on them. Uh, I will not, I'm a horse, I, I, look, I'm a, I, that, no, that did not cross anybody's mind. The hangman on a horse is something people I think have wanted to sure, see for a long time. Backstage. Uh, I thought hangman on a horse for the live crowd was great. It was a, the horse uh, was totally good. Now I will, like, when I, when I, 
well, hang on a second. No, what I will concede to you, it's okay, it's okay. What I will concede to you is on, on Farrell. Look, I was here last year, and I was nervous for Farrell last year, and I was really nervous for Farrell this year, and uh, Farrell's fine, and uh, I'm glad Farrell's fine, but no, I would not ever do that again, and uh, Brandy was not thrilled uh, with, with Cody, and uh, I was not my idea, and uh, and uh, no, with Pyro, I would not have to put Farrell in that situation again. I'm not saying, but I do really like having Farrell at the shows, and he's, he's a great dog. But uh, no, I don't. I think uh, if you have trained, uh, you know, performing animals with handlers, and you do everything in accordance with, uh, uh, you know, the standards, and bring in, you know, accredited, licensed people, then I think it's a common thing in show business uh, to do. So no, I, I, I uh, it just depends on the situation. But shooting the pyro off, no, with a with Pharaoh out there, it was uh, not something I would have done, and I was not happy about it. And uh, no, I don't think Pharaoh was happy about it either. To your point, so I, that I will concede you. But no, I thought that horse was awesome. Uh, okay. Oh, so, so, you know. And we had the horse, by the way, when the pyro went off, we made sure the horse was well corralled and out of the building before the pyro went off, to your point. So, and especially after what had happened before, we were already going to do that, but I doubled down on it. So, okay, so you're doing, in a, in a two-hour weekly show, and you've got this roster here. Now, are you going to be doing matches, like, before or after the two hours? Yeah. Like, and are you going to be, and also, how much, if any, are you going to be featuring talent from, let's say, AAA, you know, guys bringing guys in weekly or, you know, just... I no specific. Perform, I, we still have a good relationship with them, and I think they they, they would still send uh, wrestlers up by expect to wrestle for us. And I think we'll still our guys will still go down and do their big pay per views like they've been doing, and it's been helping them. And their guys have come up and helped us and been great for us. So I do think that I expect that to continue. Yeah, uh, and uh, I do expect to do your previous question. I do expect to tape matches before and after for the fans live in the audience, and then also hopefully things that people will want to see. Uh, in addition to the two hour content. So it's a great opportunity with a live audience. You know, we can do more than two hours, not necessarily two hours, more than two hours live. I think two hours live for Wednesday night's a good amount, but we could tape some things. And certainly for the live audience, I think they could, they might probably want more than two hours. I mean, like, like, is there ideas of like maybe taping stuff for BR or taping stuff for YouTube yeah. or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I have a, again, to the I question, I don't want to like give a bad like spinny non-answer like I gave to the numbers question. So uh, I don't have the numbers and I don't know where it's going to air, but I think we'll probably will tape more content. I think people are going to be really excited when they see because we have talked about some really exciting ways and we have some awesome people that might not be on the two-hour show every week that you still want to see wrestle every week. So I think we have more rest, more great wrestling in us, and I know. Uh, that I don't want to go longer than two hours out of the gate here, and I think two hours is great for the live show, and then I think for the live crowd, we can tape some more great stuff that people are going to want to watch. What, 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 about. what about an idea of, say, like, uh, like here there's a semi-post-game show, but let's say the two hours are up and maybe go, you know, an idea of something like uh, go to, whether it's BR or YouTube, and do like a 20-minute recap with promos or things like that. Has that been considered? Yeah, no, no, for sure. That is something that's been talked about a lot, and I think that's something that you might see. And then I also, you know, you might see more content from us, not necessarily live on Wednesday night that was taped that night on Wednesday night, but it's going to be really good wrestling that I think the people are going to hear and probably, I, I believe in word of mouth, either on a movie or a wrestling match or whatever. And so I'd really like to do, I believe in also live wrestling. I think it like is more exciting, and I believe big shows should be live. And I think people, like I've said a hundred times to all you guys now, that I think like people have been missing live, high production, you know, uh, quality values, uh, weekly wrestling every week from like good, nice arenas and like awesome matches. It's just not something, especially with the, the caliber of the wrestlers that are out there now and the, just these, these great matches, and also uh, with the caliber of the technology and the HD. I just think it's going to be really awesome for people to have. But yeah, I mean, uh, where it's going to end up, I don't know yet. But I do think it's like going to be really good for people that we do it. I just don't want to do more than a two-hour show because I think more than two hours. I think two hours is the perfect amount for a live wrestling show. Tony, very quick. Sorry, sorry. You guys came same time. Okay, you, well, you want to start here? Okay, we'll come back. Uh, there's been a lot of talk over years of an uh, off-season for wrestlers, uh, especially for the health of those wrestlers. Is there any kind of talk within that within all of these? I, there's nobody more health conscious, I believe, as far as a, a you know wrestling promoter, a CEO, president of a wrestling organization than I am, and uh, you know also being very hands on with the creative process and who's booked for TV every week and who's going to be booked as we go into weekly TV. You're not going to see the same people on TV every week. There is no off season. There is no off season in wrestling. You know, I, I expect we'll probably take Christmas off this year. I don't expect. I think TNT does the Christmas Story marathon, so I think Wednesday's Christmas this year. So you're not, not going to see. I don't think a TV from us. That week, but I do think like there will be wrestling from us almost every week on Wednesday on TNT. It's going to be live as much as I can possibly do it, and uh, I want people to have that. And I want you know, and uh, it doesn't have to be the same wrestlers every week. And it's not going to be the same wrestlers every week, which is why we're advertising different stuff for the different weeks. You know, we're advertising Sammy Guevara, who didn't even wrestle tonight, 
uh, in the first match against Cody. So he's going to be fresh. Uh, and, you know, and then, uh, for example, and then, you know, uh, mystery partners we've advertised. Uh, you know, I think we've brought in now uh, Pac, who hasn't uh, wrestled for us yet. He's been wrestling other places, but he's coming fresh for us. So you'll see different people every week. So no, there is no off season. I want people to know that like, this is something that's gonna be there for them every week, except maybe Christmas. And then, uh, you know, uh, I think we can, you know, with scheduling and booking, uh, you know, but just by being organized, I think we can really take care of our wrestlers and manager dates, which is what we've been doing. And I don't think any big wrestling promotion has ever probably put more resources in with asking our guys to work less dates than I have, to be fair. Hey, can I just quickly ask you about the broadcast team? You made the two additions of Golden Boy and Tony Schiavone, and I, they're great additions to the team. How is that going to work on Wednesday nights in terms of will there be some that come and do some matches? Is there going to be some who do all the matches? Have you guys figured that out yet? Can it's you tell us? It's not exactly clear. Tony's just joined us, and, and Alex is new, is new to us too. Alex is definitely going to be doing full gear. Tony, won't be, Tony will be at the Georgia football game that day, but Tony's going to be a big part of the, the Wednesdays. And I expect Tony to be with us on Wednesdays. And, you know, Golden Boy will be at full gear. Colin, it'll be the same commentary team at West tonight or on pay-per-view. And then on TV, I think there's been a huge demand for fans that want to hear uh, Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone call wrestling together again. And, and Excalibur also brings a lot of knowledge and a really intelligent insight into what's going on in the matches. And I think he'll uh, be a really good addition to those two guys as well. So I expect, uh, you know, we'll, we'll mix it up for pay-per-view. and. TV and then uh, also Tony can keep contributing in the studio as a producer and the control centers uh, or something we've, I've had a lot of fun uh, doing with them too. Somebody else you guys uh, made a big announcement about was Dustin Rhodes again, uh, multi-year deal and everything. How does it feel to know that uh, you got somebody like him locked up for a good amount of time? Not necessarily locked up because he's in all this other stuff, but uh, how does it feel to have him as a part of the team, like a coach in a way, and also you know as a wrestler? I really love Dustin. Uh, he's a great person, and I'm so happy that he's with us. He like did so much for the company, and like uh, you know, I said we said kind of. Uh, the, we expected this was going to work out and you know his people and us we kind of we took us a little bit of time and we got it done and then we, as soon as we did we got it announced but it's been kind of uh, informally kind of the expectation for a while as Dustin would come in uh, as a coach and he's done great for us as a wrestler and also he's given people a lot of advice so it's nothing new mentoring people and being that uh, you know that guiding hand to people then he's trying to develop the a lot of things I mean like Dustin's had about as many great matches over the years as anybody when we're having a career that spanned you know several decades of great matches and I think he's got a lot of insight to bring but he's also done great promos been very different characters and uh, I just think he, he'll be a really valuable addition so I'm really excited about that and I was uh, glad we could announce that before the pay-per-view too just to give people another reason to be excited about AEW. Tony, you saw LAX show up tonight uh, are they going to be able to use their old names and LAX as a team? We, uh, Santana and Ortiz uh, debuted. Uh, they, they came in. Santana and Ortiz are the guys that came out. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You've had a year to lay the foundation of this show. What's your pitch to someone flipping through the channels? What's the difference between AEW and NXT on Wednesday night? I believe there are a lot more wrestling fans that are not watching wrestling in the last few years than there are wrestling fans that have been actively watching wrestling. And I really hope that I can, you know, that we, all of us, can collectively convince not just me and not just the people in my company but the fans can kind of spread the virus and get more people uh, to embrace watching wrestling again every week because it was certainly a habit for a lot more people when I was growing up and honestly it wasn't that way uh, a few years before that like when I was uh, starting high school when I was coming in through like junior high high school wrestling was in kind of a down period and we probably weren't uh, at the height of it and I was obsessed with wrestling and I probably wasn't that cool and not that many people wanted to talk to me about it and then a couple years later when wrestling was like the biggest thing in the world everybody wanted to talk to me about it and I would get try to spread that virus I would always try to get people to come over talk to them about it and I was the kid people wanted to talk to about wrestling because people knew I knew a lot about wrestling so I guess what I would say about it is like uh, that what I would what I would ask is like anybody who would flip through the channels and like uh, would be willing to watch a wrestling show, give ours a chance. Cause if you've ever enjoyed a wrestling show, we try to give people different things that they want to see. And for me, uh, like I, I just really believe that uh, like we've got an audience uh, of people right now that are super committed to what we're doing. But I think when we get a, a platform like this to show a broader audience, like the quality of wrestling we're delivering and our commitment to the wrestling product that I don't think has been seen on national television, as far as like the bell to bell aspect of it, as far as like uh, taking the matches seriously, taking every, you know, and your the points about referees and you know, uh, giving everybody an outlet to like perform and, and show their personality. With, uh, with production, production tickets being released today, do you have uh, an attendance and gate number for tonight? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't have the exact number. Raf, I don't know if Raf's got it correct. Hey, what do you got? What was the question? Oh, they asked about the gate. 
don't know if your ads are going to comment on the. But we had it was pretty good. I know it was very good. It was a very good number. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Uh, it was very good. Thank you, Rev. Uh, so uh, what? Uh, what else can I can I do? I, I want to make sure I get everybody. Is so, Neil sticker out the women's division, or was she a one-off to show tonight? I'm not sure about that yet, uh, but uh, we're not sure. I'm not sure about that. But I was glad she was able to do the battle royale. Tony, you had mentioned that you wouldn't want to interfere with any of your NFL footprint. What steps can you make to make sure during NFL games, particularly Jaguars games, uh, some competition aren't used as advertisements with your product? Well, how do you mean? Uh, let's say there's a Jaguars game on Fox, and they want to advertise for someone else. Oh, I mean, that's, uh, that's, I can't have anything to do with that. I mean, Fox pays a lot of money to broadcast those games, and they can advertise whatever they want, and I expect they probably will advertise programs that are on Fox, so I don't have any problem with that. That's the, that's the game we're in. So, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about uh, the NFL's partnership with Fox. So, no, it's awesome, and I love uh, being in the NFL, and I do think uh, that is, like I said, you know, I, I prioritize balancing my time, and uh, I do think uh, that's something we're going to run into. I have no problem with that. Can you walk us through the Moxley situation? When he got hurt, was Pac always always in play? This whole process it happened really quick that you got a replacement. Uh, it did. It was very fortunate. Uh, you know, we, we were already uh, deep in negotiations uh, with with Pac about coming in. We'd already been working on something for him to come in, and uh, the situation became right for him to come in. And I expected he was probably going to be here. I was hoping he'd be here tonight anyway. And then you know, it worked out that he was able to work the match for us, and it was a it was a, it was a true you know it was a. I don't want to use the expression lifesaver because honestly it was a pretty scary situation with John. So I don't want to get into his personal medical situation. I think he's the one who wanted to break the news to everybody and he did. And he wanted to be here more than anybody. And uh, you know, nobody's tougher than John. And uh, it was a really scary deal. And I'm just glad he's okay. And I'm glad we were able to give people a really quality match that people are excited about. And I, you know, I do think when John's healthy, like he, he still does want to have a great match with Kenny. And I think they will have a great match. I'll tell you one more. Yeah. One more question. Well, uh, when it comes to uh, John and Kenny, I mean, are, is, is the, are you kind of gearing that for television or for pay-per-view? Uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to make any big announcements yet, but I do think uh, it was a huge match. Everybody was really excited about for this show, and I do want to make sure, like, the, you know, when John is healthy, I don't want to give put a timetable on it right now because John could, can't be here right now. And when John's healthy, I do want to give people the match. And so I, I can't uh, tell people when they'll see it, but I do expect uh, as soon as John's ready to go, we'll make an announcement. Thanks, Dave. And uh, I mean, is that, if anybody else is, I don't. I, I if anybody else has one really big question, I I will, what do you got? What was the uh, decision process like to bring the next pay per view to Baltimore? Uh, the decision process to bring the next pay per view to Baltimore is it's a really good date. Uh, it's a really good date for a wrestling show. It's uh, the time it made sense, and it was an arena and a market that it was just calling us. Uh, it's a, a Baltimore is a great town for AEW. Baltimore is a great town for wrestling. It's a great building for wrestling. It's the right time to do that pay-per-view. It's the right time for us. We'll have had six weeks of great television shows. We know Chris Jericho is AEW champion now. You know, uh, if he's still the AEW champion, then whoever the AEW champion is, I expect they'll be defending the title. I expect it's going to be a really, really good card. And I, you know, I, I, uh, having the inside track of knowing some things that'll probably, ha you know, uh, gonna, uh, that we're going to do, I think it's going to be a really awesome show. And the thought process on Baltimore is like uh, to get a building like that uh, when you have a chance, jump on it. It's a, you know. Royal Farms is a, is a great building to watch a wrestling show in Baltimore is one of the best wrestling towns. Thank That's a great question to go out on. I'm excited. I hope a lot of you are at Baltimore and uh, I'm going to try and make sure, do everything in my power to make sure it is of the standard of the shows you guys have come to expect from AEW. And thank you all for everything you've done to kind of tell people about what we're doing because uh, without you guys spreading uh, the word about a lot of our wrestlers before they were on this great platform with TNT and ITV and all the awesome things we're doing, you guys were the ones uh, that kept uh, uh, kept the, this flame going, and uh, thank you all. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks.